therapist and sleep educator that will be addressing this topic and give us a few tips to consider if you wear sleep up and you continue to get sick. And at the end, we're going to be uh, picking up a winner and uh, for a so clean machine. And uh, welcome, everybody. All right. Thank you, Francisco. So as he, uh, as Francisco reiterated, you know, we're discussing CPAP getting you sick. Um, it's obviously a topic that a lot of people, I've, in the 11 years I've been in the sleep world, it's been constantly brought up as, is it getting me sick? Can I, what happens when I get sick? And what do I do to prevent getting sick? So on and so forth. So, um, and as Francisco said, we're going to be giving away a so clean at the end, which obviously is a big ticket item for, um, helping prevent sickness and illness with uh, CPAP. So I'm going to uh, get the, uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen and go to the slides. And um, at the end, we'll have some question and answer. And here we go. <clears throat> okay. So as I mentioned, can CPAP get you sick? So that's a obviously a wonderful picture. It looks like he's drinking some, maybe some Theraflu or something. It's, we've all been in that situation, feeling like absolute garbage. <clears throat> you know, obviously getting sick is not fun or enjoyable to anybody. So, you know, it, you get the nasal congestion, you get the cough, you get the fatigue, you know, and if you use a CPAP, it can make treatment difficult. You know, you get people with nasal pillows, uh, nasal masks where their nasal congestion is is on top of things and they can't, they can't breathe. Um, but what if you were the reason you were sick and it's not your CPAP? Because improper cleaning of your CPAP can facilitate sickness and then you just keep getting it back over and over and over. You know, CPAP itself does not cause you to get sick. There's nothing in a CPAP machine that's going to get sick, make you get sick. It's basically just room air going through a filter, passing through a air pump, into a plastic tube, into a pla into a rubber mask. All of that stuff, we pull it out of the box manu from the manufacturer is, there's nothing in it that can make you sick. So it's the contaminated parts that generally lead to infection. I had a lady yesterday who was discussing, she had, um, she kept getting what she felt like was a staph infection in her nose. Um, a lot of uh, her, her ENT, was stating that she, you know, this is staph infection. And after discussing, she was using nasal pillows. She had not been cleaning and taking care of her nasal pillows. Um, she's not been re replacing them according to the manufacturer specifications. So there was some, a little bit of tweaking and adjusting to, well, let's hopefully get this stuff, you know, let's take care of this issue. You know, some of the issues, some of the uh, actual germs that we can get uh, from your CPAP in, in general, you know, one of the biggest ones is staph infection. And as I mentioned, the, the patient that I had yesterday, this is what she was dealing with. She was dealing with a staph infection. It was on her nose, in her nostrils. She had some blockages. She was getting some uh, swelling in her throat and her airway. And, you know, in, like I said, that's what her ENT said. This is staph infection. He was giving her antibiotics and different things. And she'd been on course after course of antibiotics with, and still dealing with this issue. Um, and Candida albicans. So that's a fungal infection. And of course, as most of us know, fungus grows in wet climates. Uh, these machines have a humidifier. Um, I have in my past had a patient who was using a full face mask and it was very apparent that this patient was not cleaning their equipment correctly because upon inspection, this patient had what looked like black mold growing in their mask from the humidification, possibly coughing in the mask. And then before you know it, there were spores growing. And, you know, if you breathe this in, if you breathe in a, a fungus and it gets in your lungs, because that's already a, a humid environment, our lungs carry 100% humidity, it can spread. And uh, I mean, I've seen, you can Google bronchoscopies of fungal, lung fungal infections, and it's, it's definitely not fun. Um, Hi, it's Laurie. I'm interrupting. I'm sorry. Yes. Your slideshow is not advancing. Oh, we got this little problem again. Uh, hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm uh, offline a little bit today. Welcome. 54 people in the call. I love it. Someone yeah. wants to win a so clean. That's so exciting. Are we working again? Yeah, now it's working. Perfect. All right. It's, it stinks. Uh, it's like when I go to select the share screen, there's two of them look identical. Yeah, so I'm glad I popped on. I just wanted to make sure... Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry about that. I'll be here behind the scenes. So let's get, uh, you know, so you can see the pictures of CPAP getting you sick, proper cleaning. Um, of course, the contaminated parts and such regarding CPAP. And this is where I was discussing the potential problems that you could be introducing. Um, so E. coli. Now E. coli is, um, of course, it's been, a lot of people associate it with a poor uh, hand washing, you know, with food and contact stuff like that. But again, you can introduce E. coli into your body um, just from your CPAP machine. Having, I mean, if you're using nasal pillows, you're not washing your hands, you're not clean, clean E. coli can get in. And of course that facilitates a lot of gut issues, um, urinary tract infections and such like that. Um, some of the reasons uh, you may get sick while using a CPAP machine, um, filters. You know, the filters on the machine, that's where, the, that's generally, I mean, obviously that's where the air's coming in. So there's the intake on the system. Um, and if they're not regularly cleaned or replaced, it, you can, who knows what could be on that. I mean, I've seen filters as black as night from patients that forgot. It's, the, it's honestly the most forgot about maintenance item on the entire machine, okay? It just, it get ignored. Sometimes patients even will have, will have no filter and they're just pulling in the regular room air, which, you know, is it about toss up? Is it better to use no filter or a really filthy, dirty filter? I mean, a filthy, dirty filter is going to sacrifice the effectiveness of the machine. So change your filters. Um, humidifiers. It's the next item that you're going to be running into. You know, the humidifier has water in it. Okay. So generally speaking, you want to change that water out daily. The water, it heats up. Heat, heat humidity, that can facilitate bacteria, can facilitate, facilitate fungus. And then if you're not cleanly washing your, system, your tank, it can have like this film buildup around it, like almost a slime. Um, some of these water tanks have gaskets and such that need to be cleaned out uh, appropriately. Um, the mast and the hoses. Now the length of the hose, obviously, What's fortunate, some of these machines have kind of a cooling down feature where it kind of just self dries, but it doesn't eliminate all the cleaning issues. These hoses can have this, this funky smell. And, you know, patients have asked, when do I know my hose is dirty? Well, I mean, unless you can visually see a buildup in it, which isn't common, a lot of times it starts to smell. You can get a good smell and it smells like a funk or a like a water, like a old water. Um, and masks are pretty synonymous. The seal of the mask itself can have a ton of oil buildup, particularly when you use a full face mask. I mean, what if you're coughing in this mask? And again, you, just because you cough doesn't make you sick, but by coughing into the mask and maybe you get a little bit of mucus, you get a little something out and then you don't wash it. You don't wipe it down, you don't clean it. And something grows. And then over time it continues to grow and then every time you put this mask back on, you're breathing it back in. So you could keep reintroducing this germs back into your body. You know, one of, sorry, Andrew, uh, we're gonna be uh, addressing some of the questions that we receive in the chat um, at the end, but this is a, a related question that we have uh, regarding um, being susceptible to catching um, diseases. And one of them is COVID-19 if we're CPAP users. Um, as you mentioned, with the filters and all the things that need to be changed and replaced. You know, catching COVID-19, um, being that it's a, it is an infection, if you have a CPAP machine in your bedroom and you do not have COVID and you're not around somebody who has COVID, you're not going to introduce COVID into your CPAP machine. Now, COVID-19 is a viral infection and the CDC has been shown that on surfaces, it does not last any longer than about 48 hours. So if you were a person that were to get tested positive and you're a CPAP user, technically 48 hours of no use on your system, internally, it should kill it. Obviously you wanna do a full cleaning of your system, maybe even just completely swap out your parts. But if, if you were curious or worried that it got somehow got into the mechanisms, 48 hours is about the limit for that situation. Um, back to the uh, reiterating on how to find out if your CPAP machine is dirty. Um, pretty common, this bad stink. I mean, as this guy's holding the CPAP mask with this funk smell out of it, you know, 
I do, you know, the head straps on these masks, you can see some skin buildup. You can see obviously skin buildup on the, on the facial seals. A lot of the times dirty masks are going to be your distinct reason why everything keeps reintroducing. You're going to get skin irritations on your face. Um, a lot of people do state, you know, you'll get people that will say, um, I get redness, a red mark on my face. Okay. Now there's a difference between a red mark and actually an infection. Okay. A red mark can be the type of skin tone you have. It could be how tight you're wearing the mask. Uh, and you have an impression, you know, sometimes we wake up and we get impressions from our, our bed sheets, but an actual irritation is like a rash or like a staph infection or like what looks like pimples and such. That's what we're talking about. Um, you know, you get the standard, the sore throat, the runny nose, um, the sneezing, the upper respiratory infection sort of element because this system is filthy and you're reintroducing everything right back into your body. Now, how to clean your CPAP machine? Oh, this is a, this is a very, um, some of it's logical. You know, general soap and water is a win, but being on a schedule, weekly cleaning of your, so of your CPAP machine should be at a minimum. Warm, soapy water. You, wanna, you should soak your tank and your tubing in warm, soapy water in your, in your sink. If you're not generally sink, sick, warm, soapy water is fine. Now, if you're sick or you have been sick, a solution of vinegar and water, about a cup to two cups of vinegar in your sink with some water and let everything soak for about 10 minutes and then follow it up with soap and water wash unless you really love the smell of vinegar should be apt to disinfect the system. You do not want to use bleaches. You don't use alcohol. Don't use alcohol wipes, Lysol wipes. That stuff eats up. It's bad for the seals and bad for the silicones. Um, and you, in leaving water in your water tank for too long can be a massive issue just because it's going to sit there and just breed bacteria. So we get that film around the tank or the, the, the sliminess sensation. That's like, it's like almost like algae buildup. It's not, not what you want. Plus um, the soap clean machine, you know, you got, um, the dude from Star Trek, or Star Wars, yeah, Star Trek, I can't remember his name, uh, but he's doing the commercials for the SoClean machine. Um, so SoClean, um, what SoClean does is it, it's going to disinfect everything from the tank, through the hose, through the mask, um, and they're really convenient to use for a lot of people. Um, you know, think if you have a busy schedule, you know, you, 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 you gotta be at work, you wake up, you gotta be at work a certain period of time. You don't have enough time to pull your system apart, wipe your clean mask and all this thing, but you got your soap clean there. And really all you do is just plop your mask with the hose, shut the lid, hit start, walk away. Soap clean takes care of the rest. This is, it, it completely disinfects the whole system. Um, and you know, it doesn't use chemicals, doesn't use water. It's in a very effective uh, cleaning and it's one of the things that I've noticed patients have stated when they receive a so clean or use a so clean that their infections have dropped substantially just because, you know, maybe your so maybe your general cleaning schedule isn't well good enough. Maybe you're just, maybe you're a lazy person um, that don't want to do it. Um, maybe you're not very good at cleaning the system appropriately. So this is an additive that's helps significantly. Um, of course, it's completely automated. Again, you, as you can see with the, the open picture here of the SoClean, you drop your mask in, there's a slot for your hose, so, and then there's a line that goes out of the SoClean that attaches to your tank. Turn the device on and it sends ozone through the whole system. Um, it sanitizes your hose, your mask. It's safe, it's natural, it's easy. If you follow the manufacturer instructions for SoClean, it's not going to have any ill effects. Um, from time to time, I, patients have stated that it does leave a little bit of a weird smell, which is kind of the ozone-y smell. SoClean likes to say it's, it's bacteria dying. And of course, today, we're going to be providing a free SoClean for anybody who is in the crowd. Another huge step in keeping your system clean is actually replacing your parts. It's a novel idea. Some of this stuff does wear out. Um, Again, uh, the, the patient that I was discussing with is getting the staph infections in her nose. She, she hadn't been replacing her parts quite as well, as well as she needed to be. She wasn't cleaning as well. She wasn't replacing as much. So again, that's the reintroduction factor. 
um, as I mentioned about that COVID question, if this is something that happens, if you test positive or somebody, or you're, you're worried about introduction of COVID into your system, replacing everything. You know, that's, a, that's gonna be a big win. Um, you, wanna, you generally wanna replace your filters. Most of the time, patients can do them once a month. The manufacturer recommendation is every two weeks. Um, again, that's on you as a patient, but ideally you're replacing them at least once a month. Um, the facial seal, that's a big one. I mean, obviously that's gonna affect the, the quality of your mask fit and the comfort of your mask. So if you're not replacing your seal at least once a month or two, you're really just pushing the product too long and you very well may be, of course, not cleaning it well. Um, CPAP machines can be replaced every three to five years, depending on insurance. Um, so, you know, getting a secondary CPAP machine, is, while that is a general big investment, like if you, I've had a couple incidences where the patients didn't clean their filters ever. And obviously it affected the, the functionality of the system because it's just like your car filter. If you never replace that, your system, your car's gonna, your, your air intake's gonna suffer, your engine performance is gonna suffer, that in the machine it ends up breaking. You send it back to the manufacturer, manufacturer has to do a full cleaning on the system. Some patients elect in the cleanings and the, the cleanings, the repairs and the stuff sometimes is, can be pricey. So getting a new machine uh, every couple of years may be beneficial to you. And you mentioned that some of those, uh, if you go back to the replacement for those seals, you know, some of the patients might say, but I have a family member that had a machine 10 years ago and they hadn't replaced the seal. Um, yeah. One of the things that I, I kind of discussed with the patients is this is durable me medical equipment. It mm -hmm. used to be very durable, but uncomfortable. Now manufacturers are making it more comfortable, but of course less durable. So patients are starting to notice the fallout of the equipment once it starts weighing out then it's very similar to how a tire would behave. Once you have a, you know, a worn tire, the comfort level on the car is not going to be as comfortable when it's brand new. So very similar to this product, it, you know, if, if the mask is, you, can, you might let, make it last uh, for six months or so, but uh, it might be uncomfortable. So you might be giving up comfort um, for that yeah, financial. Absolutely. Uh, You're sacrificing your own comfort for, you know, a subtle monetary value. Just, uh, and a lot of insurances will at least help foot the cost for these supplies, you know, or at least you'd get them at a discounted rate going through your insurance. So, I mean, the old masks, like, were like wearing like wooden shoes. They just didn't, they just weren't good. And now the new masks and such are a lot softer, a lot more comfortable. I mean, there's couldn't, I couldn't tell you how many times you get a person who failed CPAP 10, 15 years ago because of the way the mask fit you reintroduce them to this equipment now, they're successful. So um, essentially that's the end of the, the slides and such. And obviously if you need replacement supplies or information on cleaning, um, or would you like, if you'd like to purchase a so clean, you can call Valley Sleep Therapy at 480-361-0124. Uh, or if you need to schedule an appointment for maybe a prescription or discussing your treatment, you can of course call 480 830-3900. Um, and let's get into the and question. I'm adding the phone, sorry, I'm adding the phone numbers for everybody to see in the chat, uh, just for reference as well. Okay. So on the Q&A, Andrew, there's a lot of uh, questions under Q&A. And yeah. some I clicked answered live, but could you read through those and make sure that we got uh, Correct answer. Someone asked for step-by-step -step instructions on how to clean, and there is a video on our Valley Sleep Center YouTube page that I posted, I think in the chat. Oh, I, you know what, I, I'll post it again uh, that Helen has done, and then I will provide the recording to this uh, webinar to all of you guys that are in. I'm so excited there were 60 people. That makes me so happy. Give away free stuff and people will come. <laughs> I love it. All right, so James Strillick, um, I heard that the ResMed machine warranty void using SoClean. So the ResMed is, is stating that using a SoClean um, can void the warranty. Um, now Francisco might be able to pipe in and help him with this, but I, I've been told that if 
ResMed has, it, it deems your warranty void due to SoClean use, that SoClean will pay for their cost of getting it fixed. Is that correct? Correct. correct. So the manufacturer warranty for uh, ResMed is two-year warranty. If for some reason the machine uh, stops uh, working because of the SoClean machine, SoClean will repair and cover the cost of that machine and give an additional year of warranty. So you will get three total of three years of warranty if the issue was caused by the soap leak. Yeah. And we're seeing uh, right now the manufacturers covering for the the repairs. Uh, we see a cost anywhere from um, two hundred dollars to three hundred fifty dollars for the repairs that yeah. the manufacturer is covering for those um, for those damages. Yeah. Now the next question from Carlene Plog. It says, will Medicare or supplemental insurance help cover the cost of the soap clean? Unfortunately not. It's considered an accessory over and above what insurance will cover. Um, Theodore Tessier, can you compare the effectiveness of the soap clean system compared to other small hand size ozone generating systems that have been advertised online recently? Does the sleep center sell at the other option? I travel a lot and carry my CPAP. So clean is fairly bulky. Of course, the SoClean 2 system is a bulky system, but SoClean does make what's called the SoClean Go, which is a small- They don't anymore. They, oh, they, they, they actually ought to stop. They stopped producing that. So um, they still have a couple replacement bags, but they stopped uh, manufacturing their product. So the smaller ozone generating systems, what you have to be careful about is where it connects. The ones I've seen online and like an Amazon, they can connect directly to like your hose or the back of the machine. SoClean goes through the tank, through the hose, into the mask. So it hits all three parts. If you're just hitting the, the, the tubing and the mask and you're missing the tank, you're going to have to be hand washing your tank constantly. There, I mean, generally speaking, if it's an ozone generating system, they should work similarly to what the SoClean does. SoClean is generally the highest rated one, and it's the one we carry in our office. Rick Clark, how long does a so clean machine last? Well, it's an electronic device, so generally speaking, we're hoping years out of the so clean. But the so clean itself has a cartridge filter in it that is designed to be replaced every six months. It's designed to create the ozone in the system, so that's going to be a major maintenance item. Obviously, with any other electronic device, don't drop it. It's a big one. Don't drop your so clean. Um, AJ Young. When using the SoClean machine, do I still have to replace my mask head gear and hose? Absolutely. Uh, just the SoClean is a disinfection machine. You're still going to be using the system. You're still going to be using your mask. Your mask is going to eventually wear out. You're going to have the seals are going to wear out on it. The head straps are going to wear out of it. So eventually this stuff does need to be replaced. Now the hose itself, we're using a SoClean and being that it's significantly disinfected, your hose may not be need to be replaced as often as the manufacturer recommends, but it still should be replaced at least every six months just to do the fact of wear, rolling on the hose, the connections, the adapter connections tend to start to wear out and your mask can kind of slide off. And that's just general wear. That's not just being clean. That's just use. Um, Anthony, I'm not sure I understand your question. Uh, Jarvis Cronin. Uh, where, where to go? I understand his question. He's talking about Inspire. No CPAP, no hose. That question? No, it says, well, my doctor told me no. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Inspire. Uh, we do that on Wednesdays, if you guys want to learn about that. Gotcha. All right, uh, any questions? Jarvis Cronin, uh, where is the fine filter located? Well, a lot of it depends on your machine. There's uh, a handful of machines have filters in a few different ways. If you use an AirSense 10, it's going to be, if you look directly at it, it's going to be on the left side of your machine, there's a little trap door. If you're using an S9, uh, a ResMed S9, it's on the back of the machine. If you're using a Dream Station, if you look directly at your machine, it's going to be on the right side of the machine, a little flap door. Um, those, you know, those are generally the, the three you're going to see a lot um, without knowing what machine you have. I don't, I don't know what to where to where to direct you. Um, where are we at here? Uh, it says, why does Valley Sleep Center cover and not 
Why does not Valley Sleep Center cover and work with SoClean? I'm not sure that how to answer that question. Um, we do work with the might, SoClean. It might be related to insurance coverage. Uh, it's not covered by insurances, but it is uh, a medical device, so it can be purchased through uh, an HSA fund. Um, yep. So that's something that can be paid with an HSA card. Um, how long does it take to clean your CPAP machine equipment each time you use it? I mean, ideally, you would like to clean your CPAP machine. Uh, I mean, if you want to soak your soak your uh, your tubing and your tank and your mask, you know, about ten minutes should be about the where you should want to go with that. Um, you can do a good hand washing. One of the one other thing I like to throw out for patients is that that struggle with cleaning their equipment is to take the hose and take the mask in the shower. You're already going to be in the shower. Use some shampoo, use some body wash. At least you're cleaning it. You know, you know, disinfection would be again the white vinegar soak solution in the sink. Um, you're probably not going to be showering with white vinegar. That'd be weird. But soak solution in your sink, soap and water should maybe 10 minutes at most. Um, Gloria Clark states, can you wash the chamber in the dishwasher? And unfortunately not. Uh, there's most of these chambers are glued together and they have a rubber seal and seals and that will melt in the dishwasher. Um, uh, James Cronin, I have a tank, but I don't use it. I don't use water. How do I clean the machine? If you're talking about internally in the machine, only the manufacturer can clean internally on the system. Um, being that you're not using water, you're eliminating at least a lot of the, the issue with the, um, that you're going to get the fungus and the bacteria from the, the tank to the tube. Your mask still needs to be washed. It still absolutely needs to be washed because you're going to be breathing in the mask and coughing in the mask. Um, Constance Ray, if using SoClean, do we still need weekly cleaning with soap and water? You know, SoClean does recommend still that you clean the system. And the main reason is, is that while SoClean uses ozone to disinfect, your mask will still have oil buildup on it. The tank could still have some buildup inside the tank. So still washing your, washing your tank and washing your uh, mask is appropriate to get the oil or any buildup out of it. Um, and just a side note on that, when uh, initially the package with the so clean, it does have a pre-washed uh, solution that would help with Absolutely, a little soapy things situation. And then that's another, if you need to buy more of that soap, it can be purchased. Um, So what about the cycle of cleaning with SoClean? Um, it's a seven minute, it's a generally is a seven minute cycle. There's a couple, you can adjust the timer up and down a little bit, but generally out of the box, it comes seven minutes long. The seven minute cycle is pure, it's shooting, it's using the ozone then. And then it spends about two hours blowing the ozone off where it's pushing the ozone out of it, which makes it so you can actually reuse the, the system. Cause you do not want to just run the seven minutes, put it back on cause ozone is toxic. It's not something you want to be breathing in. So allow the system to do its full cycle. And it does it all by itself. You just throw everything in and hit start and walk away. Um, Jarvis, yes, that's your filter. That one right on the, that small filter, that's your, what we're talking about. Um, what is the newest ResMed CPAP out there as of right now? It's smaller, the water chamber is bigger, and we can and put a whole hand in the water chamber. Well, ResMed only currently has two systems. It's got its AirSense 10 system and the travel system, which is the, um, the Air Mini. Air Mini doesn't use uh, water humidification. Uh, depending on the mask you would use, it could use a waterless humidifier called a heat moisture exchanger. Um, as for the water tank for the AirSense 10, it's one size. So if, you're, if a patient's running out of water in their tank, um, I mean, there is a finite amount of time that they will last. Tanks don't last, the water doesn't last days on days, unless you have your water level really low or your humidifier like mm -hmm. off. But generally speaking, you're gonna wanna fill your tank up every day. Um, the tanks should last about eight to 10 hours. Generally speaking, if your mask is leaking excessively, you're, you will sap through your water like crazy. None of the humidity is being retained in the mask. It's all escaping out of your mask. So having a good mask that will keep your water there. Um, what is the best type of water to use? Uh, distilled water is the, is the recommended water. Distilled water has generally nothing but H2O in it. 
Um, mm -hmm. A lot of patients, if they have a, a reverse osmosis system, can use that, but you will get trace salt buildup in your tank. You're going to want to scrub that out. Vinegar does get that off uh, quickly. Andrew, do you have a one o'clock? I do. Okay. We're going to let Andrew go. Francisco, can you stay on with me and let's help answer some of these questions that are in the chat. Uh, Absolutely. Sandy sent a whole list of questions to my email. Thank you, Sandy. She's always so prepared. Um, so we could just kind of look through the chat. Andrew, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys have a great rest. We have to do this again. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, stay on and we'll answer the rest of these questions. These are great questions. You guys want to hang in there if you can. All righty. I'm getting out of here. How do I get out of here? Um, Let me just, I'm bringing up the, the Still say we for all. Small. Just, yeah. I'll kick you off. I'm leaving. Bye. 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 <laughs>
of some sort throughout. Uh, pressures need to be inspected as well, make sure they're efficient and they're not being either too low or too high. Um, if you still have residual snoring, that could give you that snore throat, uh, sorry, the sore throat. And it shouldn't run out of water, right? He's, I think he's referring to when it runs out of water, but if it's running out of water, maybe you have a leak. It shouldn't exactly. run out of water. So it's, it's okay if you run out of water as long as you don't wake up dry. Um, if you run out of water and you're still dry, make sure that you have a good seal because it might be escaping and the water is, the reason that the water is uh, gone is because it's um, evaporating. So that's causing that soreness on the throat because you're dry. So with that one, we can take a look at the, make sure that the leak is appropriate, that you have good seal, and then also that the pressure or the heat humidification could be reduced if it's too high. Okay, how much does the SoClean cost and do we take payments? Uh, the SoClean right now, um, it's for 348. Um, I just did um, a little bit of research with the manufacturer and they have a promotion that we be able to match. Um, so the cost it will be 278. Uh, but I'm not sure how long the, the manufacturer will have that promotion. All right. So today, if they wanted to buy a soap clean, you can get one for $278. And we do not take payments, correct? Correct. Okay. And then can you use Dawn soap? Yes. Okay. Um, you can use any type of soap. I would recommend something mild detergent. Just to, to keep in mind, if the harsher the substance they use, is going to degrade the product much faster. So you might end up having to replace up the liner much quicker. Got it. All right. I don't know if we got everybody's question. Um, do you want to just I think that I want to make sure that um, Debbie, um, she asked a question about the Dream Station having an adapter. Oh, right, the Dream so, Station, yeah. Right, so Queen does have the adapter for the Dream Station. Um, the other um, uh, System 1 restaurant machines as well, as well as the AirSense and the S8 uh, retro model. Um, did we talk about the small vacation so clean? Oh, do they have one? I didn't even know that. They used to have one, but as of end of last year, they stopped uh, carrying that product. So no lo they no longer have the so clean to go. That would be nice. It'd be really nice yeah. if we all go on vacation. Right, that's um, true. Yeah, they, they had a little one that it was it was the size of a cell phone and it had a laundry bag that it did all the the the, the soap clean. So if they're not using their humidifier, do they still need to clean it even if it's attached with empty water? Do they need to wash it? They should wash it, right? I would definitely recommend to at least wash it just to rinse it off for any dust, anything in there. Um, and uh, Andrew touched a little bit on the filters that at least once a month. Um, just treat it like the, the AC filter, the HIPAA, um, the filter they have at AAC. Just take a look at it. If there's dust, if you open the window, especially in the winter, you might have more dust and that needs to be changed more often. Take a look at the filter. If you see a, a change in color, um, and it's time to change that filter. Uh, if you don't see a change in color, but you do have a lot of allergy type symptoms, change the filter just to see if it makes a difference. And many times that does the trick. And if they buy a so clean online, we ship, correct? We ship uh, free shipping. Mm -hmm. Okay, free shipping. Can they order so clean at Valley Sleep Center or sorry, ValleySleepTherapy.com? Yes, and I added uh, a link uh, on the uh, on the chat for the val for the product for the so clean. Right. So we free shipping ValleySleepTherapy.com. You can also click on the link that Francisco provided. Uh, let's see. And, and just, um, we just have to know what type of machine you have and so that way you can add the, um, the adapter. So the total price with the adapter will be $298. Awesome. But if you don't need the adapter, it'd be $278 for the promotion. Um, and then we'll make sure that uh, you get that pricing. I really want to answer everybody's questions because we have like the best of the best here with, with Francisco. Francisco is our Director of Operations for Valley Sleep Therapy. Uh, he's been with me from the very beginning of Valley Sleep Therapy. And so someone wants to know, what do we do about a dry mouth? Uh, we want to make sure that we take a look at to see what is what type of mask are you using. If you're using a nasal mask, possibly patient's mouth breathing. Uh, if they do have um, a full face mask already, then we want to take a look to see the leak, to see if they have a good CO and how the humidity is working for them. So that's definitely 
something that we we'll want to take a look uh, how your therapy is working for you. All right, I have to jump off. Uh, Francisco, if you want to go ahead and answer some more questions if you want, or if anybody has yeah, any gonna... questions, please email me, but I need to run to the airport. Have a great weekend, everybody. You do as well. I'm going to take Thank a quick you, look real quick. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let me just make sure that I have the last part.